Just if you can be seated, you may be seated. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like to announce that. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pastor said, I said again. Pastor said, that's how you want it up. That's how you want it up. Felicia Skipper know that she is going to have ex exaltation this morning. And I said, oh, she's out of town. She already let me know she was going out of town. I thought, maybe you know. He said, no, I didn't know. So he said, well, I'll do it. You know, I, he's always reluctant about that thing. He said, you know, I, I don't have it. I, I don't have it to do exaltation. I'm going to let you know, Pastor, this blue collar pastor over here, it's not about ability. I say, it's not about ability. It's about your availability. Lord, can he exalt? I think I'm going to put the key stand down on my gift and let him do it. Yes, yes, yes. So we just thank God for your humbleness, Pastor, and just getting out of the way and allowing me to have this moment behind the sacred desk this morning. Amen. Amen. Give honor to God, first and foremost, who is the head of my life and the head of my family. And uh, I would like, I have family in from out of town. Some of them have flown in. Some of them have uh, taken time out of busy schedules, and some of them have drove long distances. And I'm going to ask right now that all of my family, all of my loved ones, to please stand at this time. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. I know we have visitor introductions later on in the service, but I want to take this time because you have honored Francine and us to come this far. I want to take this time to address you all and, 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 and introduce you to the church myself. I'm going to start in the back. I have my dear sister, Patricia Rayner, who's come all the way from Norfolk, from Hampton, Virginia. Hey. Alongside her is her daughter, my niece, Patty, from Raleigh, North Carolina. They drove down in the wee hours yesterday and got in last evening. Up front here, to my far right, your left, is my sister, Rose Williams. She and Francine now, they've known each other, was it first grade or kindergarten? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, Fifth grade. I always get it wrong. So she fit in the family longer than I have. And she is Reverend Rose Williams, I want to add. Her sweet daughter, my niece Tia, is here. And her beautiful daughter, Zaria, is standing with her. Yes, and to her left, or to her, her right, I'm gonna get it right here in a minute, is, uh, my son, sweetie, this is Bridget, all the way from Detroit, but she lives in New York City. Do I need to announce this young man here? <laughs> this is our, our only son. This is Najee Jamal Smith, and he came in from Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm honored to have all of my family. You'll get a chance to meet him a little later. Thank you all. God bless you. I also want to announce that at this time, the Kid Zone is open. So, the young people, they're able to get the word as we receive the word out here as adults. Amen? Amen. The Kid Zone is now open. You may take the children or have them escorted back into the Kid Zone if you desire. Amen. Amen. I was reading uh, some writing this week and I was looking at a story about a young man, a 26-year-old 26 26-year-old 26 Swedish minister he lived back in the 1800s uh, by the name of Pearl Goldberg, and he wrote a poem titled it, Oh Mighty God. And in the poem, he wrote about some of his life experiences. Well, some time went on, approximately seven years passed, and uh, his writing was uh, passed around in, in the areas, and it also passed, was passed on and translated over into Russia. But there was an English-Russian minister or missionary, if you will, by the name of Stuart Hine, who caught the word of this poem and he reviewed it. And Minister Hine, uh, in his missionary field of Russia, he was in the Carpathian Mountains. And while he was in the Carpathian Mountains, 
ministering to the Russian people in the Carpathian Mountains, he took this poem aside and during a serious thunderstorm, he decided to add his own words to the song, to the poem, and create a song during this turbulent time. So while he's up there ministering and there's a, there's a tremendous thunderstorm, he took the words of this poem, Almighty God, and wrote this song, and in it, he put, he poured out his soul. He poured out the experiences that he was going through, Pastor, the experiences. After the storm rolled, he remembered the birds that came out and sang sweetly in the trees. He remembered, uh, he remembered the great experiences he saw as the Carpathian people in the mountains was coming to Christ. And it was such a joy to his heart that he could not take credit upon his flesh that this thing was happening. He talked about this as if his soul was singing and giving praise to God. And I want to sing some of this song if, if, if you pray for me. I'm going to sing some of this song and it goes <coughs> Oh Lord my God When I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars Judges chapter 6, if you will. The 
book of Judges, chapter 6. I want y'all to continue praying for me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, you are truly great, and we just give you thanks for all. Thank you, Lord God, Heavenly Father, for not counting it as robbery to send your only begotten Son, Jesus, to come and die in our place, Lord. And you raised him from the grave to show us, Lord God, that our journey doesn't end with a dirt nap. That our journey begins again. That when we die, those of us who believe in you, there's not a period but a pause. That that pause means that to be absent from the body that takes a dirt nap, the spirit is one with you. And we thank you, dear God, Heavenly Father, that you showed us a way out of this life. You paved the way through your son, Jesus Christ. And when he returned to be at your side, Lord God, you did not leave us comfortless, but you sent your comfort, the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, I request, I beg, I ask of you, Lord God, to speak to me, Lord God, Heavenly Father. Speak to me as you made it plain on this paper before me, but what is not here, Lord God, I pray that you put it on my heart, Lord God, that I may lift you up just a little bit higher, Lord God, that we, as a corporate body of believers, may just bless your holy name in praise in Christ Jesus' name. In the saints of God, say amen. 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 The book of Judges, chapter 6, in the verses that I'll be reading from comes from the first verse, and then we'll go down to verses 7 through 10. It's there on the monitor if you don't have your Bibles. Everyone should carry their sword with them. Everybody should carry their Bible. Amen. No excuses. If you don't have one, ask the pastor. He got money. He'll get you one. <laughs> the topic of the sermon is the Redeemer's love. Amen. 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 The Redeemer's love. Chapter 6, verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Seven years, he gave them time to marinate, mm -hmm. to stew in what they've done. Verse 7, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. All right, all right. The topic is, the sermon topic again, is the Redeemer's love. And there were times in the days of the children of Israel, whereas the Israelites decided to go against the word of God. Mm -hmm. They chose an apostasy before God. What's an apostasy? I'm glad you asked. The apostasy that I'm referring to, an apostasy is a defection. <clears throat> it's a full turning away from God. We all know it today as backsliding. Mm -hmm. And backsliding is just what it is. It's just what it's called. It's when a child of God slides back into a condition or conditions that were there before they ever came into relationship with God, before their relationship ever existed. And this apostasy, this apostasy that is, or backsliding, was not the first or the second nor the third time that Israel did this. In fact, they were in their fourth apostasy oh, yeah. or backsliding before God. Mm -hmm. Yes, The Israelites, they chose to turn away from following after God. The objective, see, for every child of God is to seek God, to seek after him, to serve him, and to worship him because he is the Lord. Uh -huh. yeah. This is the great commandment, Matthew 22, verses 37 and 38. Please read it if we have it on the monitor. And we are called... Yes. Please read that. Take it into your spirit. Read it aloud. Jesus says unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Amen. Amen. And we are called to love the, the Lord God with all of our hearts, and all of our minds, and all of our souls. And it is interesting to note that each time Israel backed away 
and backslid from following after God, their conditions became worse off than the last. You think that they learned from the rebellion or the cycle of backsliding, you think that they learned that really it wasn't worth all the anguish, all the heartache, all the pain and all the fear, but every time they chose the world's conditions and the world's rules, they get caught up in a worldly mess. Mm -hmm. Then they cry out to God for deliverance from the mess they made each time, and he would restore them back to his fold. And that's because God is a loving and merciful yes, God. He yes, he is. No matter how much or how many times we vilify ourselves or put ourselves in a condition of ro 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 reprobate mentality, God still loves us enough yes. to come and get us out yes. if we ask him for yes. his help. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. He loves us unconditionally in spite of what we do and what we bring on ourselves. Amen? Amen. Yes. And this Redeemer, this God, I mean, he really, he redeems and he restores us if we just turn from our sinful conditions and just cry out to him. Okay. Anyone ever been there? Have you ever backslid? Come on, be honest. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. For a time, you had to cry out to God. Cry out in prayers and ask God to deliver you from the mess that you made. Have you ever been caught up in a mess that you felt like there was no end in sight? Am I, am I by myself? Yes. It could be a mountain of debt. It could be something that you didn't have credit for, yes. but you had to get it. You just uh -huh. had to get it. You didn't need it, but you got it anyway. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. It could be unemployment. All you had was to get up and go to work. All you had to do was be there on time. All you had to do was accept the faults that the boss caused, called upon you, but yet you had to have the last say so, and that was an yeah. excellent way. Come on. Yes, yes. Come on, come on, come on. That's why they call him boss. Sometimes it's a relationship issue. Matters of the heart. heart. We've all been there one time or another. We've turned from following God and then we have to cry out to God again and again and wait for God to redeem us from another fall. Yeah. If it sounds familiar, say amen. amen. If you can relate to it, say amen. Okay, okay. Then that means to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. what's your spiritual seed you fell on? We in for a bumpy rock. Yes, yes, yes. See, the people of God oftentimes today, we find or place ourselves in a temporary backslidden condition that can lead to permanent consequences. Right. I think I'll say that again. I say the people of God today find themselves or we place ourselves oftentimes in temporary backslidden conditions that can lead to permanent consequences. I think I will give you some examples. You said you were just going to have a couple of drinks out with the boys. You were out in town with a few friends and that was all it was supposed to be. It was been a long work week. You spent countless hours at work. You spent countless hours at work today. So you might have had two or three or was it four or five drinks? I don't remember. But at a short drive home, there was a quick, disastrous accident your vehicle is hit, there's a wreck, your vehicle is involved, it leads to an insurance nightmare, not only an insurance nightmare, but you have a DUI violation, you have a driver's license is suspended, you have a night, a lockup in the county, and we have court records and court, court, court costs to pay. Come on, come on, come on. Permanent consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, a verbal disagreement between two friends. It was just a difference of opinion, y'all. Two people who used to be really good friends, <laughs> and because they couldn't agree on something in a conversation that neither of them really had any power to change, whether it be about politics or women or sports or women, uh, any subject on the planet, <laughs> one of them tried to belittle the other or joke the other in front of the crowd, and something was said or misheard or misinterpreted, and it became a put down all of a sudden. It it was supposed to be funny, but now somebody bumped somebody, and the last comment that was made sounded like a threat, and somebody has the man up. Temper right. are flying, right. shoving ensues, punches are thrown, and before anybody knows what really happened, there's assault charges, hospital bills for injuries, civil fines, personal property damages, court cases, and possibly jail time coming. Yeah. Permanent consequences. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. One night of creeping, y'all. Just one night of creeping. Yes, yes. And nine months later, you're looking at mama or dad, dad, or something venereal has gotten in the mix. Permanent consequences. I might not get a day in the day, He wanted a few pictures of your personal beauty. So he said he really wanted to see what it, I mean, what you look like. 
He said he loved you. You might have said it first. You were in love. I think you thought you were in love or fallen in love or thought it was love. So you text him some of your personal best. Right. Now it's over. Relationships never really got off the ground. You trusted so much. You trusted too much. You trusted too fast. You trusted too soon. And now he's angry, man. He's got your hot pics and they're all over his friends' phones, as well as people you don't even know. All right. All right. All right. Here's a footnote, though. <laughs> God is forgiving. Yes, sir. Yes, God. Yes, sir. yes, he is. You will still have to live with the yeah. consequences of your sin. Right. Because of your sin issue, right. you will reap the conditions of the permanent consequences. Come on, come on. It is so easy for one to find themselves or find himself way out and apart from God. Mm. Yeah. Pastor Young mentioned it in Bible study just the other night. He said, first, you skip a Sunday or two of Bible study. Uh -huh. But that's not backsliding. But then you miss a couple more, and now it's a month now. Oh, it's, right. it's apart from worshiping God, and it's apart from being in right fellowship with the saints of God. And Bible study and Sunday school are no longer a blip on your radar. You couldn't find Bible study or Sunday school if you had right. GPS. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And before you realize things, you have missed six months of fellowship oh, and worship oh, and oh, serving oh, the oh. Lord. Six months become seven months. Yeah. Seven months become eight months. Yes, and a year has passed by before yes, you know it. And and you can see one of your fellow worshipers, one of your worshiping partners at the marketplace or the movies or at the comedy club, and you don't even have to run and hide anymore out of shame. You don't have to look the other way and hope they don't recognize you in the crowd anymore. Because it's been so long since you've been inside the, the worship center, you can boldly face them in your shame and think nothing of it. <laughs> you've been gone so long, you don't even have to scramble for the right words to say or come up with a pitiful excuse as to why you stop worshiping like you used to. Mm. So, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. yeah, the lies are becoming so easy as breathing, it's so easy as taking oh, a breath. Right. I've been sick. <laughs> I'm in between jobs. I'm trying to work out some issues at home, and once I get myself together, I'll be back. I don't have time right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My cat had kittens, and I'm helping her raise them. <laughs> Let me tell you something about God. He loves you so much that he came down from a place on high called heaven. Yeah. And if you don't want him, you don't have to seek him. That's right. Don't worry, he's not going to chase you all over Duval County. That's right. He's going to let you run. He already knows where you are. Psalm 139 and 7 and 8, it reads that, let, that God lets us know that if we make our bed in hell, he will be right there with us. That's right. Yes, he will. Someone, I need somebody to read Psalms 139, 7 and 8. Read it aloud, please, church. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Yes. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. And if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Amen. He lets us know that if we make our bed in hell, he'll be right there with us. Because if the truth be told, he's not going on another cross for you. He's not going on That's another right. cross for That's me. Right. He's not going on another cross for nobody. Yeah. Nobody's that special. Yeah. What he did, the mission ended a long time ago yeah. on a hill called Calvary. Yes, right. yes, he hung his head and he died. Yes, and he laid him in a borrowed tomb. Yeah. And God raised him for the dead. He said, this is your way out. There's no excuse for not serving God. Right. If you're called, you're called. Yes, if you're called, you're worshiping. Yes. If you're called, you'll believe him. Yes. If you're called, None like him. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. That's where he is. That's where he is. Yes. So the least that I can do is I can come to the house of God on Sunday morning. That's the least I can do to show him that I love him. The least I can do is worship him while I still have a chance. The least I can do, Pastor, is bless his holy name. The least I can do is tell somebody about his goodness. The least I can do is say thank you, Jesus. The least I can do is show that I love him by trying to love everybody else. That's the least I can do. The least I can do is go into the house of God and work out my own salvation. The least I can do is seek after him as a deer panted for the water. Amen? Amen? That's the least I can do because he didn't have to do it. All right. Give me a love unconditional, but he did. Yeah, when I was lost in sin,
sin and had reservations uh -huh. made for me in hell. Uh -huh. God came down from his place on, on, on high and he found me a lost soul. He found me and he made me his own. I said he found me and he gave me his grace and his mercy. He found me and he made me a slave in order to set me free. He found me and he gave me a love unconditional. He found me and now I am his and he is mine. He found me and I can call him father because I'm his son. He found me up in blood Christ is your personal Savior. Now is the time for a new beginning. 
right here, right now. I'm not asking you to join Unity Baptist Church, but if that was put on your heart to do, you can do it. If you feel that you're called to join Unity, that's fine. But the most important thing, the most important thing is that you surrender and give your life to Christ. When we stand in here and we praise God and we lift up our hands, when we praise in God, we hold them up for two reasons. Some of us are praising God, thanking Him for His new mercies. Because the Bible says every day there are new mercies. We spent yesterday's mercies. And we don't know what tomorrow holds. Or the next hour. But we also hold them up as a sign of surrender. Lord, we yield to you. Lord, we give everything to you. You have made us your slave. You have made us your slave in order to set us free. So I ask you, if you're hearing the sound of my voice today, God has placed it on your heart. Well, preacher, I don't know much about this Lord, this Jesus you talk about. We can teach you. We can show you. Come on, we can show you the way. That's the first step. You take the first step and let Jesus do the rest. The saints of God are praying. The children of God are praying. Everyone who is in the sound of my voice who is saved, put your hand up right now. Put your hand up right now. I know the Lord. I love the Lord. If your hand is not up and you need a hand, I extend my hand to you right now. We all took that walk. You may put your hands down. We all have taken that walk. I extend my hand to you. God said, your physical movement is an outward expression of your inward experience. What you yeah. feel right now. In Jesus' name. While the music is playing softly, the time is now. Don't think about it. Don't put it off to tomorrow. I remember hearing a story about a young man who came up to a preacher after the word was preached. And he, he kind of chuckled at the preacher and he said, Preacher, that was a good word, but that, that wasn't for me today. I'll do that some other time. And the preacher was a visiting preacher. The pastor allowed him to say to desk. And when that young man left the church, as he thought it was funny, he drove on off. The preacher was headed home, and all of a sudden on the highway, there was a traffic jam, and he didn't know what happened. And finally, as the road cleared and the preacher was allowed, able to go by, he saw a car turned upside down. And in the road, he saw a white sheep, and the ambulatory crew was about to cover up this young man's head, and he recognized the young man. That was the man who laughed at him in the church turned all the way around and came back to the church and he found the pastor of that church and he said what are you doing did you forget your bible did you forget something he said no i had to come back to measure the distance as how far it is from the house of god to hell so i don't know who i'm talking to but just, i just want you to keep that on your heart and i'm gonna tell you as the music stops and we all be seated if even then you feel I need to come forth and give my life to Christ. Before you leave this house, seek me or seek one of these preachers. It's not too late. Yeah. Yeah. You may be seeking the house of God.